Our next author, after growing up on a farm in rural Tennessee, our next author attained degrees in literature and nursing. He is a three-time published winner in fiction and poetry of the annual writing contest held by Vanderbilt Medical Center. He lived in Nashville for many years and around the country as a travel nurse before returning to his hometown of Spring Hill, Tennessee, where he now works as an operating room RN in open heart surgery. Now about the book, More Things in Heaven and Earth. The novel is about a very urban and cultivated young doctor named Luke Bradford, who takes a job as a sole physician in an isolated middle Tennessee community. Reluctantly, he has signed a three-year commitment in return for having his college loans paid off. He's quite brilliant, but his early days there are a disaster, not in terms of his medical practice, but with outrageous and laughable events surrounding his arrival. From this auspicious start, his new world only becomes more complex. Uh, he answered that if more things in heaven and earth were a cocktail, it would probably be a mint julep, kicked back, and very southern. Please welcome Jeff High with more things in heaven and earth from Penguin. Jeff High. Thank you, Tim. And my name is Jeff High. And I just got to tell you, I'm just proud to be here, folks. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, the, the new doctor is pretty much a domestic disaster when he comes to town, and so I don't want to set the stage for what I'm about to read. It's a short conversation between he and his housekeeper. So one of the locals volunteers to be his housekeeper to kind of keep him in order. She is a rather devout, robust, no-nonsense uh, black woman in her late 50s named Connie Thompson, who is, turns out, he later finds it's actually quite brilliant and actually quite wealthy, but she just does this to help the community out. She doesn't care much for him to start out with. And generally, she'll fix dinner for him. He comes home, she leaves. But before the first week's out, she finally decides to stay and have a conversation with him. And he serves it as an opportunity to tell a little bit about his frustration with being in a small town. She gives him some advice in an economy of time and words that uh, well, is what I want to read. It starts out with Connie talking. Besides, Dr. Bradford, not everybody thinks Water Valley is such an uninteresting place. You're kidding, right? Connie responded with a sullen face, offended. Where are your manners, boy? That's not exactly cotillion behavior now, is it? I would have thought a buckhead upbringing would have taught you to be a little more polite. I shrugged. Well, it's, it's not that. It's just that aside from the lake, the softball park, and Malin's barbershop, there's just not a lot to this town. I guess I'm just more of a big city guy, but it is what it is. So here I am. Connie shook her head. Mm -mm. Give it some time, Dr. Bradford. There's not a lot to see in, in Water Valley, but what you hear makes up for it. <laughs> Connie, sh see, he, her comment provoked a question. Okay, how does that work anyway? How does what work? How is it that everybody in this little town knows everything about anything the moment it happens? It's like you have to constantly watch your step. Mm, I wouldn't worry about that too much, doctor. You're not gonna control what people think. Besides, around here, you'll find out pretty quick that the people that care don't matter, and the people that really matter don't care. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. 